it's certainly uh, true that uh, foreign policy is, uh, decisions by presidents are not less controversial because he has a CIA <laughs> and other intelligence agencies helping him make smart decisions. Uh, so do we say intelligence fails because presidents don't make good foreign policy in your opinion? Mm. Some people use that as their, as their metric. Uh, each agency, because it is using different methods, has to have a different way of measuring what it's able to accomplish. What can you get through the bits and pieces of communications versus what can you get from a human source who is in a particular position? Uh, what can you get from uh, I imagery uh, that comes from space? Uh, and how does it all fit together? When it comes right down to it, you have to turn to the analysts. The intelligence analysts have to be the central focus of performance evaluation. Their views as to what best serves their ability to uh, develop the uh, information that can be acted upon whether to protect a target, whether to intercept a, uh, 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 prevent an attack, or whether to make a smart political or military decision. Uh, the analysts have to be the ones that do that. And I think we do not uh, do, uh, the intelligence community tries to give the analysts uh, that voice. The analysts do not know, I think, enough about where the intelligence is coming and, wh and how they get it, uh, and that that would be one way of, uh, of improving. But it's an extraordinary challenge we put on the intelligence analysts, and they are too often forgotten in mm. the whole, unless they are accused of screwing up, as occurred after uh, the Iraq war and the whole question of, uh, of uh, WMD and, and the Saddam had. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and is that uh, more, be, in other words, there, there were a lot of different analysts saying different things at the State Department versus at the CIA versus at the Department of Defense. So is that a matter of the policymaker choosing which intelligence support the policy he prefers? That's always going to be one of the challenges the intelligence community faces. Mm -hmm. that when there are extremely intense policy uh, views held at the leadership levels of the government, how do you uh, avoid having that influence? Uh, your, uh, uh, the intelligence that you provide. Uh, and that is uh, uh, not easy. Uh, I have to say that sometimes intelligence analysts are also frustrated when uh, the leadership levels of the government don't pay any attention to the intelligence that these billions of dollars and these brilliant minds have produced. And that can also be frustrating as well when uh, decisions are made uh, uh, without uh, that participation. Uh, I do think, though, that uh, uh, the uh, lessons that were learned after uh, the first Gulf War are going to kind of inoculate uh, the uh, intelligence bureaucracy uh, for a long time to come. But like Pearl Harbor became the model for the whole Cold War era mm -hmm. of uh, being able to anticipate a potential uh, 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 war with the Soviet Union. And uh, I think the uh, uh, Iraq War decisions are going to have a similar uh, a long-range uh, impact uh, as Pearl Harbor did.